We're creating barbecue-style beef brisket with crunchy coleslaw and sweet potato wedges, which will be right up her street. Holly. Now, you love barbecues, right? Yes. So, you're going to help me barbecue this delicious piece of brisket. Brisket. Look at it. Beautiful. It's a very tough cut of meat, so it needs to be cooked slowly so it gets really nice and tender. Are we barbecuing it outside? We're going to actually put the barbecue flavour on there, but we're going to cook it in the oven. Okay. okay. So, mustard powder. Okay. Here, we have some celery seed. Next, a little bit of salt in there. Okay. What's this here? Cumin. Two again. Nice. Good. Now, this one. Cayenne pepper. You're absolutely right. Right, two teaspoons of that in there as well. Good. Now, what I want you to do... Fresh pepper on there. I'll give that a little mix. Mm -hmm. Roll up your little sleeves. And then I want you to rub all that spice into the brisket. Almost like you're massaging it in there. Good girl. Come on, Holes, get your hands nice and flat on there. Good girl. Now, that's nice and coated, OK, in the spice. So, gas on, roast and tray on. What we've got to do now with all those spices is sear them in. A couple of tablespoons of olive oil into the tray. Well done. OK. That's getting nice and hot now. You get your brisket and all that spice. Lay that in there nicely. OK. So now, we're going to start colouring it. As you start to sear in, you smell those spices? Yep. All that spice left on the plate, we're going to use, yeah? I want you to get the onions, nice and carefully slice them down. Not too thin, but just like you're chopping them. Take your time. Smell all those spices now? Good girl. Thank you. I'm wash my hands so I can rub my eyes. Damn, Holly. Was homework that bad? No, <laughs> the onions. Oh, no. Don't rub your eyes. Don't rub your eyes. We've got the colour. Look, on the brisket. OK? Yeah. Take that out, literally for 30 seconds. OK? Onions into the tray, please. Nice. You see, it's starting to smell slightly barbecue already. Give that a little stir. Nice. Now, one nice tablespoon of brown sugar. What does the brown sugar do, Dad? So the brown sugar, you're going to start caramelising the onions. Right, from there, my bay leaves in, please. Good girl. Oh. Yes, please. Right, do you want to take over? Sure. Good. Careful, that tray is very, very hot. A tablespoon of tomato puree. Roast that off at the bottom of the tray. And really rub it in amongst the onions. Good girl. Mm -hmm. Now, look at the colour of those onions. Right, now, time for a little drink. <laughs> for the brisket. OK, one bottle of beer in, please. So you go in, you put yours in there, I'll put mine here. Dad! Uh, good health to you and your brisket. Good health. Mm. Bring that to the ball. OK, now, this is where it gets really exciting. I want you to lift the brisket up and put it on top of the onions. In she goes. Good girl. And then, I want you to pour the stock all the way around, please. I'm using beef stock, but it will work with chicken stock or even vegetable stock. Once the stock has come to the boil, cover tightly with foil. You just pinch in the ends. Bend that down, and then you just twist all the way. So that's nice and tight. That's the hard work done. Thank Boom. you. Simply pop it in the oven for three and a half hours, and as it cooks, you can get on with the side dishes. First job, sweet potato wedges with some serious flavour. Start by making a spice mix. In a dry pan, toast coriander seeds until beautifully aromatic. Then put them in a pestle and mortar, add salt and grind. Next, smoked paprika, dried oregano, cayenne pepper and mix. Spice mix done. Now simply cut your sweet potatoes into wedges. Toss in olive oil and thoroughly cover with the spice mix. Onto a baking tray and into a preheated oven for 30 minutes, turning halfway. Irresistible sweet potato wedges are ready. Now, to finish off my beef. See that smell? Just sort of travels everywhere. Oh. oh. 
Now, look at that. So, we're going to leave that to rest. What does resting mean? Resting means where you've cooked a joint and you just leave it to relax. So, it'll make the meat so much more tender. OK? Right, coleslaw. Traditionally, you would mix slaw with what? Mayonnaise. That's right, mayonnaise. This time, we're going to do it a little different. So, I'd like you to put the yoghurt into the bowl for me. Please, all of it. I'll start slicing the white cabbage and the red cabbage. Now, from there, a nice tablespoon of mustard in there, please. Give that a nice mix-up. Nice little touch of salt and pepper. OK. Now, a little cider vinegar. So a little splash of cider vinegar in there, OK. As I shred this, yeah. OK, I'd like you, please, then to get the red cabbage and just open up into that and mix it in at the same time. And then you fold that in there as I start shredding. See how it's coming together? Yeah. Right, that's all the red cabbage. Now, for the white. So, you've got that nice vinegary tartness to the slaw, and the yoghurt keeps it nice and fresh. Last little bit in. One more little thing. So, we've got some nice chopped fresh chives in there, and that will give it this nice light onion flavour. So, chives in. How's that? Now taste it with the chives in there. Mm. Delicious. So, I would like you to fill up the bowl. I'm going to very carefully lift out my brisket. How come has it shrunk? It's been in the oven for nearly three and a half hours. So, it's been cooked slowly. That sits on there. Oh, my goodness me. Let me just show you what this looks like. I'm going to start slicing it. We'll see how soft. Mm. Look at that. And here's the thing about helping Daddy cook. Here's the perk. You get to taste it first before anybody. That is so good. That tastes delicious. See so all that wonderful flavour in there. Last job is to create an incredibly quick and delicious sauce. Gas on and reduce the spicy juices and onions the beef cooked in. Then add in cider vinegar, and you've got a brilliant tangy barbecue sauce. That... It smells nice. Doesn't it? Wow. That is brisket and a half. Now, the rest of it can go in the gravy pot. And that's a really nice, rich, spicy barbecue onion gravy. That, my darling, is the perfect way to serve brisket. Right, you ready? If you carry the sweet potato for me, I've got the brisket. Wow. Let's go, Donny. Well done, by the way. Thank you. This is a real American beauty. Gorgeous, low and slow cooked barbecue beef brisket with sweet potato wedges and yogurt coleslaw. Megan, Jack. Hi. Tilly. Big, deep, smoky flavours that bring the taste of the American South to your kitchen. Here's my favourite, beef and ale with mustard dumplings. And helping in the kitchen is my youngest, Tilly. Tilly! First things first, I'd like you to season the stew and steak. A nice spoon of flour. Mix? Mixed, yeah. Good girl. What's the flour going to do, Dad? The flour helps to brown the beef. A seasoned flour will also help to add flavour and thicken the stew. I feel a bit like marshmallows. They do feel a little bit marshmallow, don't they? Look at the size of the chunks of the beef. Yeah. I'm going to cut my carrots, literally. So it be similar. Similar size, that's right. Does that mean they'll cook equally? That's right. Now, these are little pearl onions. I'm going to put them in whole as well. Everything has to stay the same. Otherwise, it could burn. Oh, we've seen burn garlic before. <laughs> oh, Matilda. She promised you weren't going to mention that. What is that? Time. Time. And what are they? Bay leaves. Bay leaves, good girl. Tablespoon of oil in. 
The beef goes in first, OK? In. Now. It's a really nice colour. It's got a beautiful colour. In with the carrots. Thyme in. Good girl. Garlic. Pearl onions in. Ooh. Good. Give that a really good mix-up. Stew's easy to make, Daddy. Stews are very easy to make, providing, at the beginning, you give it a little bit of love. Now that's all beautifully brown. Mmm. That beer? That is beer. Mm. And that's going to deglaze the pan. Adding beer or stout helps to tenderise the beef and give it a hearty, delicious flavour. And that's the only way I want you to taste beer. In a stew. Yeah? I want you to add in a couple of teaspoons of tomato puree, please. In fact, three, please. Because it's so nice. And there's one final thing in there. Cover the stew and steak with a beef stock. Give that a little mix with Danny, please. Wow, that's really nice. It's not even cooked yet. Do you keep all these vegetables in when you st um, serve it to people? Oh, yes. Is the garlic going to be burnt? No. Excuse me. Right, and we always put the lid with a little bit. Just a little bit, so it can breathe. That's right, and not make the stew all watery. Into the oven at 150, please, Tills, for about two and a half hours. And now, you can focus on your homework. Fun. Time to knock up two delicious hearty potato classics in one. Twice baked bubble and squeak jacket potatoes. Start by baking large potatoes in a preheated oven at 180 degrees. Shred one third of your Savoy cabbage and saute in butter and add a dash of water until tender. After about half an hour, your potatoes should be crisp on the outside and cooked through in the middle. Slice them in half and scoop out the soft potato center. Then mash with a couple of knobs of butter, mix in the cabbage and season to taste. Spoon this mixture back into your potato shells and into the oven for a further 10 minutes or until the tops are nice and crispy and golden. Two delicious hearty potato classics in one. Twice baked bubbling squeak jacket potatoes. Right, homework done? Yeah. Beef stew is stewing. Stewing. Let's get on with our delicious hearty pear tart. I've been looking forward to this. You and I, chef, are going to prep the pears. So if you peel, I'll top and tail into quarters. Pears go soft in the oven very, very quickly. So if we're going to put them on a tart, you'll need to leave them whole, half or in quarter. What's that in there? Ginger. Mm, that's right, that's stem ginger. So we're going to use stem ginger and fresh ginger. Next, add your stem ginger, a little of the stem ginger syrup... Good girl. ..and some brown sugar to your quartered pears. And then just grate some fresh ginger. Off you go. So it's a bit of a um, different one to grate this because it doesn't really come through like the cheese. No. We're going to make that a little bit zesty. And now we've got some lemon zest. Some lemon zest in there. Right, what we need to do now is give that a nice little mix. Now, this is a sweet pastry. You can buy this stuff or you can make it. It's so easy to do. So give me your finger. That's my centre point. I want you to get the pears going round like that, in a really nice circle. It's difficult, isn't it, because the pears keep on sliding all over the place? Yeah. We've got egg wash on the outside, and I'm going to show you a little trick. So you lift that up. So is the egg wash acting like a bit of a glue? That's right. Crimple this with our finger, and the pastry forms this nice little shelf, like a little money bag. Are you going to do anything with the spare pears? Oh, yeah. You start building that up, then, you see? We've got the fresh ginger. And those nice little bits of stem ginger. Let me go round my egg. With your glue. With my glue, just on top. Tilly's last job is to give our tart a good dusting of icing sugar. So that caramelises it and colours the pears beautifully. It's a bit right. like snow. Isn't it? Now, that glazes the pastry, so the pastry has this really nice shine on there as well. Finally, the lemon on top. And then put that there. 180, and in she goes. You smell the beef. It smells delish. Wow, it's even gone down a bit more, hasn't it? Look at that. I want you to just... I was hoping you'd ask. Just have a little taste. Mmm. 
Mm. How's that taste now? Mm. <laughs> We're not allowed anymore. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right, dumpling time. Flour in, please. I'm using self-raising flour for a fluffy result. But if you like your dumplings hard, use plain flour. Next, the dumpling essential, suet. Ooh. That makes the dumplings nice and moist. Thank you. Followed by a generous dollop of grain mustard. Two yeah, fingers. Okay. Start rolling the fingers round. And I've got a touch of warm water here. Your fingers are now a nice little whisk. My fingers are getting tired. Right, now put your hand in there. Now you should bring mm. all that dough together. I'll show you the best way to get that nice and clean. Sprinkle some flour on your hands, rub them together. All that will come off. Nice. That's a good way. Isn't it? Now, we've got this wonderful dumpling mixture. How squidgy is that? Ooh. A little flour on your hands. OK. Roll these lengthways. And then I want you to roll them like that in your hand. Off you go. Smell that mustard in there? Huh? I never trust you with something like that, should I? <laughs> Do you want I'm to smell it? You. Yes, please. <laughs> Tilly. Gently. Let's go in at 12 o'clock. 1 o'clock. 12 in the centre. And then put that back into the oven for 20 minutes to cook the dumplings. Now, if you open the door for Daddy, I'm going to take out that tart. Ooh, it smells so nice. Doesn't it? Our pear tart has had 35 minutes in the oven. Look at that, baby. That looks good. Mmm. Mm. Would you like me to start dusting? Yes, please. Nice and gently, all the way around. Good girl. Little taps. The others are going to love this. It looks a bit like a snowy cake. Doesn't it? Good job. Now, very carefully, carry that to the table. How nice does that look? Delish. OK, I'll check on the dumplings. Now, Ooh, look. So They've sort of doubled in size. Whoa, mm. definitely. A final sprinkling of chopped parsley and our stew is ready for the table. I might have to have a quick taste before we go. Tilly. Just to check. I mean, we do have to be sure. We have to be very sure. Mmm. Mmm. That is an amazing, hearty beef stew with dumplings. Right, the twice-baked loaded potatoes. And we are ready. This is my ultimate hearty dinner. A comforting rich beef stew with mustard dumplings and twice-baked bubble and squeak jacket potatoes. And to make sure your sweet tooth is completely satisfied, a rich and zingy pear and ginger galette. On the menu is a succulent rare beef fillet with salsa verde, served with roasted truffle new potatoes. Dish is designed to make your special occasion one to remember and to end our Ramsey get-together with a bang. I've enlisted willing sous-chef Jack wow. to help me make a sublime chocolate and pistachio semi-fredo. Now, I know you love chocolate, right? Yes. We'll break this up so it melts nice and evenly. Right, that goes over a bamory. You can't put cool. the chocolate in direct contact with the gas. Yeah. Okay, otherwise it will split. Crack four eggs in there for me, please, one. Of course. Hold one like that on the side, and then your fingers in and pull out. Okay. OK. Good. Nice. <laughs> now you're cracking eggs with one hand. Hey. <laughs> nice one. I need some muscles. OK, start whisking. Okay. And I'll fold in a bit of sugar. Come on. Let's do 30 seconds each. Ready? OK. Come on, Jack. Give it some 13-year-old welly. Come on, some muscles. 10 seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one. Right, here we go. Your turn, the sugar. Let's go. You see, the secret to whisking vigorously is changing hands every 10 seconds. Yeah. Now I'm going to stir the chocolate. I'll stir that. No, 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 just showing off. <laughs> no, just showing off. <laughs> now, the secret behind this is getting it really nice and thick, and that's like a sabayon. OK, your turn. Come on, change, change. Again? Ch yeah, of course. I'll stir the chocolate. And leave that to slightly cool down a touch. From there. Cream in. Why putting the cream in separately? Because I'm going to get it nice and thick first. If yeah. you start whisking that, I'm going to get in the vanilla. To maximise the flavour from a vanilla bean, cut the pod in half lengthways and scrape out those wonderfully aromatic seeds. For extra flavour, 
put the pod in as well, but remember to take it out once it's infused. So we've got three components. The melted chocolate. Yes. Sugar. Yes. And the eggs whipped up. And the cream with the vanilla. Next, mix in your melted chocolate with the sugar and egg sabayon. So you've got a nice, rich chocolate ganache. Smell how delicious that is. <laughs> I'm now putting the cream, and so you just whisk that in. Now, look at that. How gorgeous is that looking? And that, my son, is a chocolate semi freddo. Now, big taste. Pistachio. Pistachio, that's right. Sprinkle them in. Now, get your baking tray. You line that with cling film so it's easy to pull out once it yeah. sets. And then you just pull that in. That is a real treat. So you fold that over, OK? This is like ice cream in any way. Yeah, as it sets, mm. you slice it, it's like this nice chocolate mm -hmm. ice block, delicious. Then put your semi-fredo into the freezer for around three hours to set. Right, Jack, get that pan nice and hot. Recognise that? Fillet of beef. This is a Rolls-Royce cut oh, of nice. beef. So we've got to treat it with some respect, OK? Yeah. Mop up all that seasoning. Yeah. Into the pan and get that really nice and hot. Hello, Tills. Hey guys. I'm just going to check up on you. Kiss. Mm -hmm. Kiss. And... Mm -hmm. mm. What's that, Holes? Very nice. Thyme. What's her name? Rosemary. Rosemary. A little bit of garlic and thyme in there. Cooking with these aromatic herbs and garlic will add flavour to the beef. Because it's a fillet of beef, there's hardly any fat on there, so you sear it quickly. Mm. Ends as well get mm. seared. I'm going to now put some butter in there. Continue frying all those herbs. Now, baste that with the butter. See? Dad, are we just having this or are we going to have something with it? Now we're going to serve some beautiful baked potatoes with truffle and a salsa verde. Into the oven, eight to ten minutes, that's all. Next, my super special baked new potatoes. Wash and drain small new potatoes and tip into a baking tray. Drizzle with olive oil, then season with a touch of salt and freshly ground black pepper. Place into an oven preheated at 180 degrees Celsius and bake for 35 minutes until crisp on the outside and soft all the way through. Transfer to your serving dish and grate over fresh Parmesan cheese. Last but not least, shave gorgeous earthy black truffle slivers onto the cheesy potatoes. Bake new potatoes with a lavish twist. Indulgent, but couldn't be simpler to make. Right, salsa verde. Anchovies. A little touch of anchovy oil in there, OK? I love anchovies. After that, we've got some capers. Oh. Garlic in with the anchovies and the capers, OK? A touch of salt. Why only a touch? Because you've got the salt from the anchovies already. That's right. Well done, Hals. Dijon mustard. Cherry vinegar, give that a nice mix. And now, this is where it starts to go to a completely different level. Some fresh mint and some fresh parsley. I want half of it in there pureed. Yeah. A touch of olive oil in there, in. The rest of the mint, a touch of salt, pepper. Excited? Yeah. You know what it tastes? I'd love some of these. Mmm. What's it taste like? That. Mm. 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 Might need to try a tiny oh, wow. bit more. Might need Just to try a tiny check. bit more. Just to check. Stop! <laughs> you can't kiss any boys now. <laughs> Before the kids polish off all the salsa verde, I need a distraction, and I think my beef fillet will do the job nicely. Look at this baby. Hot holes. Oh. Up. Look at that. Seared, and look how juicy mm. and tender that is. Take that out and let that sit on there. A little spoon, just while it sits and rests off your salsa verde. As the beef cools down, that salsa verde marinades. That goes to the table very carefully, please. Tills, take it over the, the baked potatoes, please. Right, semi me Now, look at that, nice. Wow. And then you just get your chocolate and then you grate it. Over. Whoa. 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 She's gorgeous. How delicious is that? Let's go, but do not drop that, please. Okay. 
I'm Lovely. going up to my bedroom now. Jack. This is my ultimate special occasion dinner. The tenderest rare beef fillet with punchy salsa verde, served with extravagant truffled new potatoes, and a sublime chocolate and pistachio semi-fredo.